No, God, please, no, 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 no! Welcome to the channel, I'm Base Bellagio. On today's Dwarf Fortress video, I am going to give you the best tips and tricks to get the best performance from this game. Oh, hell yeah. First, I'm going to explain why the game has such a hard time with performance, and then I'll help you determine what you need to do to fix it. First of all, even people with 4090 graphics cards are having problems playing this game. And the reason is, this game is extremely single core CPU intensive. <laughs> What that means is the game really uses your CPU more than anything, and it does not use anything more than one core. So multi-core processors don't matter. The only thing that matters is a strong single core performance. Those chips are going to be better at this game than other people's chips. So automatically people that overclock their CPU will definitely have better performance than others. But that's a whole separate video and will take you doing some research. But there is no perfect settings and perfect way to get this game performing well until the magic day that they enable multi-threading for this game, which nobody has discussed. That is a complete fantasy and I am wishing for it. Well, you can wish in one hand and crap in the other. There is only one real setting in the options that you can adjust to help with frames per second. Everything else I recommend goes into world generation, fortress design, and how you play the game. Because everything in this game is calculated. And the one main thing that's calculated while you're playing fortress mode is pathing. We'll get into that later. The main setting that you should adjust if you're having a really hard time playing the game would be temperature calculations. So in setting, you turn off this setting and this will turn off the game calculating temperatures between items. This will affect some advanced systems in the game. It's still a bug. Uh, for example, obsidian farming, according to the wiki, is unusable with temperature calculations off because the tiles will never cool down and your doors will refuse to step on them. That being said, I don't think we're at the point of obsidian farming if we're having problems with the game and we can't get that far. Now let's get into world design. The larger your world, the slower your game is going to be innately. We'll just start there. The more people in your world, the more sites will also slow your game down, or it could. Remember, it's all calculations. So when you calculate a 10,000 year old, very large world, you are going to have lag on that world, despite everything you try to do. We'll talk about pathing now. Your dwarves, when they when you walk past each other in a single hallway, the game calculates the dwarf having to lie down while another dwarf climbs over them. To alleviate this, you'll see a lot of pros at the game with at least double wide hallways and their stairs are always doubled or quadrupled. This will give your dwarves adequate space to walk around each other and this is very important. I've even gone so far to make double doors on very popular areas. This is why in the Steam version and probably in the classic, again, I'm a noob when it comes to classic mode, there is a low traffic and high traffic setting that you can make to have your dwarves favor certain paths, put it that way. All this helps with frames. Caverns can be a massive frame rate issue. So again, if you want to play a large world, just for the history, maybe you're setting something up for adventure mode or you want the huge millions of pages of history and legends mode, maybe you make a large world but take caverns off. Caverns is an issue because of pathfinding, like we're talking about. Every creature that visits you, either from the underground or up above, like 
fighters or poets that want to visit the cavern. The game is calculating in their mind their personalities. Oh, I want to go to the cavern. I want to visit the cavern. The caverns in one of my games are flooded completely. I don't know what that does for my frames per second, but it's very interesting. Don't, don't do it to me. I beg you. No. Your fortress design also in more depth can affect your frames per second. Let's say you have a massive stockpile and your idea of winning this game is to make tens of thousands of drinks for your 150 dwarves. You want to make tens of thousands of everything. That is going to destroy your frames per second. And that's what creates this FPS death, as the community has called it. You want to use quantum stockpiling. There are many videos out there of people that can explain it better, but there are methods in the game to dump items into a single spot. It's like infinite storage, basically. It is an exploit that is built into the game and has not been removed. It's one of those mechanisms, you know? And that needs to be utilized if you're the hoarder and you want your dwarves hoarding millions of items. Also, something known as a Dwarven Atom Smasher is a method of crushing items into non-existence, usually with a bridge. And you can get rid of a lot of items this way to get, to get them off the map. Also, donating them to passing caravans, other civilizations is a great way to get rid of them. The sweet spot for dwarves in this game seems to be around 150 dwarves on average to 200. Over 200, you're going to start experiencing FPS lowering and possibly death if you did not design your fortress adequately, like we've talked about. One way that I think you could solve this would be to send, you know, make massive squads, military squads of expendable dwarves, the expendables. Stay in your seat. And you could send them all around the world, conquering, raiding, stealing getting artifacts, who knows, even just sending them out in the world to possibly be lost or sending them down into the caverns to fight stuff, you know? Fitting the herd, as what they say. Various machines in the game, you've seen videos by now of what's called Dwarven Water Reactors. They can slow the game down extremely. Anything you do with water or lava movement, movement of water, can affect the game. Again, I'm not telling you not to do these things. You just have to be aware. So let's just say you have this massive dam project and you achieve it, you're damming up the river and all of a sudden you're experiencing some frame loss and you're scratching your head, why? What happened? You know, I'm explaining now the reasons why it could be. This game is so in-depth and complex that there are still bug testers and people like you who play the game who are still creating theories and research notes and papers behind FPS impact in this game. For example, there's a theory that unhappy dwarves will continue checking their clothing for wear and have unhappy thoughts. And people think that this can affect frames. Who knows? I'm just telling you known ones. If you make a small world, don't have caverns on, but then uncap the population and sites, and you know, you go into an age of goblins like what happened in my game. I had these mega lag spikes that lasted 10 seconds at a time every 20 seconds. So you'd be able to play 20 seconds, mega lag spike. The game would just lock up for 10 seconds. My theory is it was because the game was calculating the tens of thousands, the hundreds of thousands of goblins and undead goblins all around the world as I'm playing. Crazy. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the Wikipedia about maximizing your frame rates. There are some really advanced ways to modify your game in the different text files of the settings. I have not done this personally. I don't recommend doing this if you're new. I recommend doing everything that I've said um, check out others. I know Blind is going to make an FPS settings guide or a performance guide. A few moments later. So the key is with this game, that's because it's so complex, gather information about these topics from multiple sources, because then you'll be able to formulate the best method to fix the frames in your game. 
everyone's games are so personalized. You have people making advanced worlds with various settings that could affect it, you know? So that's why we have to come together on a thing like this. Because this game's only going to grow and get more advanced as they add magic, as they add a villain system more advanced, as they add sieges. Radical things the brothers are planning, the creators of the game, the Adams brothers. Here is a last little caveat. Even things like snow and ice melting can cause lag spikes. The main takeaway from this video is the game is CPU bound to a single core. If you have a weak single core performance on your CPU, you are already starting the race off a little slower. And that's fine. You can adjust things accordingly to get the best performance. Make the world smaller. You can, they could be just as rich. You know, just because it's a small to medium map, even in adventure mode, a medium map, you're never going to explore every inch of it before your character dies. I mean, unless you're like a super powerful, I guess. The game is calculating everything that could cause problems and even little hitches here and there. Turning off temperature calculations is the main start for people that are just trying to learn the game and not have any FPS issues because every item in your stockpile, the temperature is being calculated. What's the temperature of this item? What's the temperature of the table? What's the temperature near the, the glass kiln, the furnace, the, near the magma that just erupted? So that's why you start with temperatures. Make your hallways wider multiple stairs like I, I make. I do that pretty well. There's definitely many things that I could do better. I personally have not experienced FPS death yet or any end game slowness. I've had up to 150 dwarves. I just haven't got like massive enough to cause the FPS death. And um, the only time I had issues when I generated that small but massively rich filled with population filled with demons. It was like 800 demons or something. Uh, and so many goblins. It made like a world filled with goblins. So again, let me know what you think down below in the comments. This was a little longer than usual, but this was definitely a rich topic. Uh, let me know what causes your game to lag, how you fix it. If this was helpful, let me know. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate all the new viewers and leaving thumbs up and good comments and subscribing. I'm trying to grow the channel, and you guys are my only sponsors by giving thumbs ups, sharing the video with friends, and leaving cool comments and constructive criticism. Thank you very much for watching.